Hey you dupers, good morning, it's Rob Muffet. Guys, today we've got a review video. You know, today is uh, Review Sunday. We do uh, people, places, things, good services on Sunday. We do food on Friday and wild card on Wednesday, whatever I want. Today is review. We're going to go over the accessories and things I purchased for my Android Galaxy S5 smartphone that I'm using for videos. And you're probably saying to yourself right now, Bob, they, they stopped making those things back <laughs> five or six years ago. What am I doing? Here's the story. I've got over 846 videos on YouTube. And most of those videos, last five or six years, I've made with these babies. These little guys right here. Canon S100s. They're fantastic cameras. Take great photos, great video. And they're really wonderful at crapping out on you. <laughs> the, you get a lens error where the lens won't go back in. You have some other problems. I fix them now and then. I just got tired of it. You know, it's expensive to purchase the parts and then to hope you fix it right. But also, the only other phone I use is this fella. I'm at, welcome to the 90s. And uh, my sister, I think she was embarrassed for me. She gave me an old Galaxy Android S5. It's actually a pretty decent phone camera. Uh, I don't use it for the phone part, but if we're taking video and, and uh, uh, for photos, it's pretty decent. I know the new ones are much, much better, but um, what I've done is in the last couple of months, I bought a bunch of things, try to get it up to speed and get me up to speed to take in photos and video with it. And I'm going to show you the stuff I bought in the last few months, about almost 10 things, I think, for the little uh, Android uh, S5. So that's what this morning's video is about. For reviewing, we're going to review the stuff I've purchased. Some of them are kind of cool. You can use for any smartphone. Um, so it's not just an old Android S5. All right, guys. Um, sayonara. <laughs> uh, we'll miss you, Canon S100. Let's go over the stuff I bought in the last two or three months since I got the camera. The first thing I got was this... Uh, uh, smartphone adapter for the uh, tripod. It comes with some legs to make a little stand, but I've never used them. Basically, I just use it to hook up to my tripod because the camera, it doesn't take that great video when you're walking around with it or moving around it. So you want something to stabilize it. And this is really, really pretty inexpensive. And it also, it's easier to hold too. The next thing I bought was a case for it. I didn't want to break it if I dropped it. But later on, I purchased a very large battery that comes with a back that enlarges the camera so this case wouldn't fit. So if you're going to get a large battery so you make the phone larger, you wouldn't want to buy this. But it did work very well. And it was inexpensive. I purchased a glass screen. And after I purchased a glass screen, I realized I already had a glass screen. <laughs> uh, so the next thing I got, because I've never used a cell phone before, a smartphone. So um, I felt like an idiot. So I got a book for idiots. But I really didn't want to use this to make phone calls. I just want, or even emails or text. In fact, I like the fact that I don't text. You know, if you have a girlfriend or a wife and they want you to text, just tell them you don't text. <laughs> You know, I don't want to ruin a good thing. So uh, um, I just used the phone for the camera. And this book, when I got it, I thought it would have some information about the phone for taking video and photos. And it does, but it's rather limited. Um, I found more information on the Internet than I did in the book. So I wouldn't recommend it just for information on taking photos and video. But for everything else, it's great. This is one of the best things I bought for the phone. This is much faster than the USB cord. You see here, it's got the two little parts on the dongle there, and it's so much faster. There's a name for this. It's not just USB, it's something else. I forgot what you call it. But it, it works so much faster. It's just unbelievable and very inexpensive. And it's one of the, the highest rated, in fact, Amazon's, Amazon's choice for this particular item. But, uh, which isn't always their best choice, I don't think so. This is something I bought, but I haven't used. The Amazon, the Android S5, it is a little bit water resistant if you have the port uh, closed. And my cover on this port is broken off. So I found you can buy the replacements 
even comes with a screwdriver for like six bucks. So I need to fix that. This is the large, big old battery I bought. It's 7,800 milliamps for like 22 bucks. But it actually comes with a back to it that is much larger that'll fit this battery. And it looks kind of cool. This is one of the coolest things I've bought for the camera. It's a waterproof case. I don't know how good it is because I haven't used it in deep water yet. It says it'll go to 100 feet, which is remarkable. I used to, I used to make underwater video camera housings <laughs> about 15 years ago. Uh, I manufactured and sold them. The, f the fact that th this, something like this allegedly will go down to 100 feet is very surprising. I read a lot of reviews and I didn't see that many people uh, upset with the the bag getting their camera wet. There was a couple people. But the thing about these types of seals, if you have the slightest bit of grains of sand or even like an eyelash, it can uh, keep the seal from closing properly. And if you're, it's in the water for a long period of time, it gets seepage. Um, it re re relies completely on the pressure to close the bag. Now, when you go underwater in your bag, you can use the screen with your finger, but if you go down very far, the water is going to be pressing pressing on the the screen, and you're not going to be able to function uh, or use the functions. What you can do with the uh, this particular phone is you can change it to where instead of taking the photos by pressing on it, you can uh, alter your your settings to where you can take. Uh, picture using your volume control buttons on the side here. So when you go underwater, the pressure presses down on the plastic. Um, but it was very inexpensive purchase. I think it was like like six or seven bucks. Um, also, there is a, a latch or a, uh, a strap here that holds on to the camera by this little uh, opening here, little latch here. The problem is if you want to like drop this down the water, all of your photos and your video would be vertical. I figured out that if you put like a little pen in the case and then use some clips to hold on to the case and then tie it onto the clips, you could uh, uh, rotate your camera to where it'd be horizontal. And that way you could take some horizontal uh, uh, landscape type film and video and photos while it's underwater. Um, if you were up on top of the water, you want, I mean, if you're underwater, you can hold it any way you want. But I was thinking if you were like on a bridge or something or on a boat and you want to just put it on a line underwater, that would be one way you could use this or you could film and it wouldn't be on uh, portrait mode. Um, now, what are the last two things we bought here? This was crucial. I was getting, a, I made a video about this. I was getting a loud hiss whenever I was taking video and I found out that the microphone on the camera was interfering. It was giving off a hiss. So what I did is I plugged this into the, the, the microphone or the headphone port on the camera. And then I plugged my lapel microphone into this, this little, uh, little uh, uh, gadget here, this uh, little adopter. And that way I was able to bypass the uh, camera's microphone and just use my lapel microphone and I've been using it ever since uh, it works pretty good so if you have a problem with hiss with your phone you want to get one of these babies it really s saved that camera or, or save that phone I was able to use it to take vo uh, videos let's see what's the last thing here oh the the micro card that's one of the cool things about the S5 is you can take the micro, micro card out. If you want to do a lot of editing, instead of hooking up your phone to your computer, just take the micro card out and put it in Doctor and put that into the computer. So it's very, very handy. There's a lot of features I like on the S5 that aren't, from what I understand, on a lot of other newer phones. Um, but some of the newer phones, they take extraordinarily good photo and video. Like the, uh, the Android the uh what the s8 9 and 10 they take super good quality video and photos but i'm happy with the s5 i want to learn the s5 and learn to take even better quality photos and video and uh and then maybe later on 
advance to get it, maybe an S8 that's inexpensive. Uh, <laughs> I'm a tight wad. What can I say? So, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. If you're thinking about making your own videos on YouTube and you don't know what uh, camera to get, I recommend you get an old uh, Android S5. And these are some of the things I purchased for mine that might help you take better video. And give it a shot. They're, they're very inexpensive. You can always just resell them on eBay if, if you aren't happy with what you got. All right, guys, hope this was something helpful to you. I put on new videos every week. Been doing it for 13 years. Got over 800 videos. And I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm addicted. All right, guys, take care. And uh, I put on food videos on Friday. I put review videos on Sunday and wild card videos, whatever I want, on Wednesday. All right, guys, take care. See you out there.